Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to a discussion on how to cut through with three string jazz chords on the guitar. Today we're going to focus exclusively on the seventh style of chords. But instead of playing the bar chord shape for the seventh chord or the familiar open string style first three frets of the guitar chord shapes, we're going to use a standard jazz guitar chord shape that was made popular from the early big band days. The great rhythm guitar players like Freddie Green in the Count Basie Orchestra. These players found ways to cut through the wall of sound created by the trumpets, trombones, saxophones and rhythm section. And these chords are very simple to play but very effective in all styles of music. If you have a look at my tutorial on an introduction to the electric guitar, volume two, where I play the Bill Lawrence Stratocaster and play Stevie's Blues right at the end of that clip, a tribute to Stevie Ray Vaughan. Right at the end of that um, playing, you'll notice, you'll see the familiar chord shapes that I'm going to demonstrate in today's tutorial just being part of my natural way of playing the guitar. So whilst these chords had their origin in big band jazz rhythm guitar playing, the shapes are very much usable in all styles of guitar playing from rock and roll to blues, folk, country, you name it. So let's have a look at the fundamental shapes we'll be working with today. The foundation of big band jazz rhythm guitar playing relied on just using three of the six available strings for many of the chord shapes. That way the guitar could really cut through rather than get muddled up in the sound of the piano and the bass and all of the wind instruments. Now in today's tutorial we're going to use this shape here it, and we're going to play in the key of G. We'll learn three chords, G7, seventh, C7 seventh, and D7, and we'll string those together in an exercise that I want you to play along with me. So let's look at the shape. We start on the third fret of the sixth string and play the note G with our index finger. We then play the note F on the third fret of the fourth string with our second finger. And finally we play the note B on the fourth fret of the third string with our third finger. Now throughout this entire tutorial we will only be fingering the sixth, fourth and third strings of the guitar. All of the other strings will just be dudded out. So when we're strumming on our right hand we're really focusing only on strumming from the sixth string down to the third. The fifth string will just be dudded out. Now the chord G 7th is normally made up of four notes, G, B, D and F. You'll notice in this shape being only a three string chord shape and not allowing any of the other strings to ring open, we have deliberately left out one of the notes in the G 7th chord. That's the D. There is no D in our three finger, three string shape there. And that's fine. Just the same as there's 88 keys on a grand piano, some of the greatest piano players of all time played those keys very sparingly. Count Basie, for example, was known, you know, for his lack of notes rather than how many notes he played. But the notes that he did play on the piano managed to cut through the wall of sound of that big band. And that's what we're trying to do today. We're not trying to play a six string G seventh chord. And that shape has many very valid roles in music. Nothing, nothing at all wrong with the standard six string G seventh chord. However, you can instantly hear, particularly in jazz comping. Comping simply means that the chords are separated almost in a staccato style. The, the chords are sort of played short and detached. 
which is the translation of staccato. Now, by that, I'll just play some comping, C-O-M-P-I-N-G, on the G7th chord using that jazz G7th chord shape. Listen to this. So each of the individual strums of the chord are separated. And the way I'm doing it, I'm not doing it with my right hand. I'm just lifting the pressure up slightly on those three fingers between each strum. So what I'm doing is my fingers are depressed when I'm strumming down, but then I lift them up. And, and the minute I lift, I don't lift them off the guitar. I don't go, because there'd be all of those open strings ringing on. I just lift the pressure up enough, but keep my fingers on the strings to silence the strings. So it becomes a very short and detached staccato style of playing. So just going over the chord shape again, have a look at it on the, the video. First finger on the third fret of the sixth string, the note G. Second finger on the third fret of the fourth string, the note F. Third finger on the fourth fret of the third string, the note B. We only strike the four strings on the guitar. The fifth is dudded out, deaded out. There's our G7. Now that chord shape is built around our index finger. It's built around the name of the note on the sixth string. So we're trying to play a, a 12 bar blues here. The next chord we need is C seventh. So we simply slide that shape up to the point where our index finger is playing the note C on the sixth string of the guitar. Now that will be on fret eight of the guitar. The chord shape stays the same. This time we're playing the notes C, B flat and E. Now a C seventh chord has four notes in it. C, E, G, and B flat. There is no G in our chord shape there, and that's fine. That's one of the ways that our guitar will cut through the wall of sound that the band that you might be playing in is creating. It doesn't have to be a big band. It might be a rock band, and there might be just an enormous amount of noise coming from the drums, bass, guitar, and keyboards, and, and what have you. So less is more less notes that you play can often mean that you will be heard more distinctly in the mix of the overall musical instruments being played. So if we comp the C seventh chord in that sort of staccato style, we go back to G seventh. Only one more chord to learn, same shape. We slide up to where our index finger becomes D on the guitar. Now that is on the 10th fret of the guitar, and if we hold the shape the same and just play those same three strings, we'll be playing the notes D, C, and F sharp, a D 7th chord. Now the four notes in a D 7th chord are D, F sharp, A, and C. There is no A in our D 7th chord there, that is absolutely fine, and the chord will cut through. Okay, so G 7th. C seventh, D seventh, third fret, eighth fret, tenth fret. Now the order of the chords in this progression that I want to play is four strums on G seventh, four on C seventh, eight on G seventh, four on C seventh, another four, four on G seventh another four. Four on D7, four on C7, four on G7, and then another four. And that's our 12 bar blues. Now, I want you to stop this video and practice the order of events there, the chord shapes. Remember, I'll just do it one more time. So four strums, C7, G7. Now we're going up to C7, going back to G7, we're going up to D7, C7, G7. Very much a standard 12 bar blues format in the key of G. Okay, let's go through an exercise that's going to really put our newfound technique to the test. 
Remember, we've got the one chord shape, the jazz seventh chord shape, using just strings six, four, and three. The fifth string, we dead out throughout. And the concept of comping the chords, releasing the pressure off the fret, but not off the string, so that we've got short and detached chords. Like staccato, but the term is comping the chords. I've got a metronome here. I've got it set at 190 beats per minute, which is quite fast. I want to take you through that same 12 bar blues progression of G7, seventh, C7, seventh, G7, seventh, C7, seventh, G7, seventh, D7, seventh, C7, seventh, G7. Seventh. So those chords in that order at 190 beats a minute, comping every strum of the chord. So I'm going to give myself two bars count in and I'll say the names of the chords as we change. But I'd like you to play along with me in this exercise. Once you get up to speed, you may want to stop the video and practice this on your own. But use this next exercise as your own test as to whether you've really mastered the new chord shape, the ability to slide that shape up and down the guitar neck with ease, in time at a fast speed, and the concept of comping each chord comping each chord after each strum. Okay, let's give it a go. Here's the metronome, 190 beats a minute. Two bar count in, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, G seventh, C seventh, G seventh, C seventh, G seventh, D seventh, C seventh, G seventh. Let's do it again. G seventh, C seventh, G seventh. I hope you enjoyed working your way through that rather fast 12 bar blues progression using the new jazz guitar three string seventh chord shape and also introducing the concept of comping chords on the guitar. As always, keep in touch via my website www.brianhays.biz that's B-I-Z subscribe to my YouTube channel and send me an email if you have any fundamental questions about playing the guitar. Bye for now.